Um, we've got Jerry Shaplinski here, tight ends coach for the Las Vegas Raiders. Jerry, thank you so much for joining us on the dark side of Beast Rider. Um, I just want to talk about your grind here and what you bring to the table in terms of mentality that you want to instill in these players that, you're, that are coming in. Yeah, I think uh, as a coach in general, uh, the best thing we can do is be available for our players to give them as much information as we can to help them succeed. So if we start there, that's the most important thing. It certainly comes in a wide variety of forms. Uh, so we're trying to teach them. There's instruction in the meeting room. There's information you're giving them. You're trying to find out how they learn, uh, how they adapt. Um, what's you know? Are they a note taker? Are they not a note taker? Do they need to pay attention. You know? Do they need visual learners? Are they rep learners and walkthroughs and all that kind of stuff? So that's certainly part of it. Showing them film, getting out on the field, demonstrating stuff, and then working all that stuff into the team drill. So um, there's a lot of different ways that players learn. There's a lot of different ways you have to teach them. There's a lot of different ways you have to get through them. Uh, also to motivate them. So uh, whatever it takes is whatever we usually try to do. And obviously when working with Jimmy Garoppolo, he kind of touted you as a, as a real driving force in the NFL because he didn't have a playbook in college. Can you talk about that experience with, without a freaking playbook and then having to relearn everything for the first time? Uh, yeah, that was a pretty cool experience uh, for probably for both of us. Um, he was young as a, I remember, um, obviously being first drafted, and I was very young as an assistant. So uh, both of us kind of hit the ground run um, and just worked really hard to develop a good relationship together, develop good trust, uh, good camaraderie there, and then to, you know, basically just digest all the information and get that going. So um, it's been awesome to see him. Um, progress throughout the years and succeed and do really well and uh, you know it, it, uh, not many people remember where he came from and how what he needed to do to get to that point so I've uh, always been proud of him for that and for the work he's put in to be successful there. And you have a young rookie coming in you guys obviously traded up in the second round and Michael Mayer can you talk about what he brings to the table not in terms of just his on-field production but what he brings off the field in terms of his learning curve and going into training camp? Yeah certainly um, you know all those guys that we have, our, our tight end rooms, uh, pretty cool this year. We have two guys coming back with experience in the system. We have two vets, you know, Austin Hooper and O.J. Howard, who are vets but don't really have much experience in the system. Then we got two rookies and Mike and, and uh, Shank who are coming in that are learning um, everything new. So all those guys have been working hard. Certainly Mike's no different from them. Um, he puts in a good day's work. Uh, both of those guys do as rookies. They come in, they grind, they learn, they ask a lot of great questions. Um, their personalities are very outgoing. Um, again, they work hard, ask good questions, and they just do what we ask them to do as well as they can. And if they make a mistake, they try not to repeat it. And they've done a good job of that so far. So you talk about not being a repeat offender, you know, when you watch practice and then you go back to the game film and you say, hey, this is something that you need to work on for going into the next game. Um, where's that fine line where you draw the progress as to saying, okay, this guy is either getting it, he's not getting it, especially for a rookie who that may be a hard transition for him, especially as an inline blocker. Yeah, certainly. Um, you know, it's unrealistic to think that everyone's going to get everything the first time and mm -hmm. be really good and be correct all the time. And um, as much as we want that to happen, as we strive for that, it's like I said, it's not realistic. So you're going to make a mistake. What you want to see is can they put it to bed quickly? If it keep happens repetitively, then I think to be honest, as a coach, the first thing we got to do is look at ourselves and say, okay, mm -hmm. what am I not getting through? Right. How can I change the way I'm teaching this? How can I change the way I'm explaining it? Um, and make sure we get through to them. And then you know, eventually, by the time it would come to that, I would say hopefully the first thing I do is evaluate myself um, and then see what ways I could help them. But but they all do a pretty good job of you know learning and, and growing. And the other thing is not just learning from their mistakes, but as a group you got to pay attention to everybody else. So if one makes a mistake, you got to take that opportunity to coach mm. everybody. You know. All right, and one last thing, if you were to describe uh, your coaching style in one word. Ooh, what would it be? Okay. Um, Ask good questions, coach. That, yeah, really good. I, uh, you do, Ryan. Um, I want to think about this. I want to try to get this one right. Uh, let's see. One word. Uh, thorough. Okay. How's that? I like it. I like it. Well, thank you so much, coach. Yeah, I appreciate you, you. Great meeting you, Ryan.